Canadian John Rizdal was beheaded by the Islamist militant group Abu Sayyaf in the Philippines. Now, they took him hostage along with three others in September of 2015. This group originally demanded a ransom for his return of $80 million. They are said to be ISIS affiliates, Nick. Um, we know that they're a group less than 500 and um, that they took him hostage along with three other people from this resort. Here's what we know about him. He's 68 years old. He was doing this for travel. A former CBC journalist, um, also mine um, executive, and he was doing this for, for pleasure. Um, he was captured. We know that this group is currently holding four other groups hostage. They said that they were going to uh, behead one of these hostages if they didn't receive the ransom on the 25th, a male hostage, which is exactly what they did. Um, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called this an act of cold-blooded murder. And it looks like there is a cohesive united front, at least in theory, uh, based on the statement that um, the armed forces of the Philippines, Philippines released. Um, this is what they had to say about this. There will be no let up in the determined efforts to neutralize these lawless elements and thwart further threats to peace and security. So looks like there's a united front, but at the same time, they've murdered one of their hostages. Right, Abu Sayyaf. Uh, they have less than 500 members. Uh, the exact number, of course, is unknown, but that's the ballpark range there. So it's not very many people, and they're hiding out in the jungles uh, doing things like this. What, what, what we see is basically this is like a win-win situation for them because either A, they'll get a, a, a very large sum of money from doing this, or B, They'll behead someone and get their name out there and have people starting to talk about them, which is also very good for the group, and that's what they want. They've recently become uh, affiliates with ISIS, or like, you know, these so-called affiliates, where they can get money from ISIS, and then ISIS kind of in return can say, oh, well, we're also in Asia too, you know, we're in Africa, we're in Europe, we're in the Middle East. Well, here we are, we're in Asia as well. So it's kind of like a win-win for both of them. I don't know, I think, I feel like they just need to get the money. Right, because uh, we've known this name, we've we've known this group for quite a long time, but but still, look, it, it, they're not really picking up, you know, a lot of traction, a lot of steam, because there's really not that many members. So they they need to do things like this that are that are crazy to get their name out there and get people talking about them. Right. Well, here's what we know about his murder. So several hours after um, the group announced that they were going to kill a hostage, um, Philippine authorities actually found a head on the streets and it was presumed to be John's and it was in fact John's. Um, 18 Philippine soldiers were killed in clashes with militants earlier this month. And uh, this is just one group. Um, it's said that the process, the, the election process of the Philippines is corrupt. Um, these groups are marginalized. They don't feel like they're a part of society. And you have these, these factioned groups like Abu Sayyaf um, that are extremists, that are militants, that capture hostages for money. And, um, you know, one element of this is that they're disenfranchised, this very corrupt political system that they want to be heard. But making a demand like this, you know, we, we rarely see money like that paid on an international scale, if ever. Um, how heinous and despicable this act is, though. And unfortunately, one hostage confirmed dead. Um, it is John Rizdal.